Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before I get to our guest, well, first of all, you should recognize her. It's Maria. She's coming back on the podcast. She was on, I think, did the math. It was like last August or so. So it's been about nine months or so. And, you know, she's looking better than she did the last time that she was on. So I don't even know how this is possible. And she's she just informed us she's two months before she turns 60. And I'm just, you know... My jaw, I mean, I'm, I, I'm surprised I'm even able to talk now because my jaw should be hitting the floor right now just because it's just absolutely ridiculous. But she's here to talk to us, you know, about what she's been up to since we last talked. And also, you know, since we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, how she's been coping with that. But most importantly, Maria, thank you so much for coming back on. Hi, thanks for having me, Ryan. It's good to see you again. Hi, everybody. I wish I could say it's good to see you again, but it just makes me jealous again, like it like it did the last time. So, you know, it's it, the feeling, I know, but it's just everyone, go and follow her on her page, first of all, before we get this started, because you will get inspired and motivated to get in shape and to stop eating all those Twinkies and staying on the couch all the time. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. Twinkies but- are okay once in a while. Twinkies are okay once in a while. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit it. I had a Twinkie probably like once last month. And, you know, yeah, they are in proportion. They are fine. But like, so our state fair has got uh, canceled, but we're notorious for having like the fried Twinkies on like a stick. And it's just, oh, those are, are so you good. kidding me? I've never had one of those. Oh, they're to die for. Are you serious? I mean, the sound of it, though, I, I, I'm not sure about that. Well, sometimes like they'll put like a corn dog in between it too, so then it'll be like a fried, a fried. Tw- so then they'll have like the buttery part on the end and like the Twinkie part on the inside. I mean, they do so much. Or they'll put like a they'll put like a a chocolate bar in the middle of it too. I mean, it's just oh. Well, one one of these years I might try that. I mean, I mean, but that is just diabetes waiting for you. I mean, I, that is just I feel so bad after I have that, but it's just it is definitely just so. It tastes so good, doesn't it? Oh, I mean, my mouth is starting to drool right now just thinking about it. I mean, that's just, I mean, especially during this pandemic, but before we get into that, I mean, what have, how have you been since then? I mean, I know it's been nine months. I mean, if you change things up, how, how's your life been? Well, life has been really good. We, um, you know, the last time we talked, we were in Florida and then, um, uh, we just decided to move up to Virginia because the grandkids are here. And so, um, uh, we, we did everything within a month, believe it or not. This was back in November. We put the house in the market on a, a Sunday. We got an offering on a what Wednesday. And then we flew up to Virginia to find a house. Lucky for us that our uh, my son and daughter-in-law, they're both realtors. So now we um, found this beautiful house uh, here in Lorton, Virginia, Mason Neck. And it, it's kind of like um, country. It, five minutes away, it's, uh, it's like traffic, heavy traffic. You make a left and you go drive into the country. So we have like a, a house out here in the woods. It's like a, uh, a tree house. Believe it or not, you wake up and there's trees all over and you hear birds. And so it's been great. You know, I, I, I don't really miss Florida at all. I miss our friends. Um, I like the four seasons, but, I, but I'm kind of glad that it didn't get really, really cold because I really, I'm not, I'm getting used to the cold again. But um, everything's great. You know, I love the house. I didn't think that we'd be able to fill up this house. You know, we were, we were thinking of downsizing, but we went the opposite direction. So, um, we came, bought this house, really, really beautiful house. And then it's like the basement was completely, it was bare. It was like 1,500 square feet in the basement. It's bare. And then um, when the pandemic hit, the gym got closed. And it's like, well, I guess you know what to do with that basement. So uh, now um, my interest right now is to go. And whenever I'm, I'm online constantly looking for equipment, you know. Um, but funny thing is, actually... Everybody's doing the same thing, I think, because when you, you click on the equipment that you want, um, it's sold out or it's not available. So you're going to have to wait. And then they jacked up the prices from a lot of them. You believe it? Like, uh, what? Dumbbells? A set goes for $200. Are you kidding me? That's pri- price uh, gouging, you know? And so we're kind of hoping after this is all over that the prices will go down again. I can continue to fill up my gym. Now I used to be, I'm one of those uh, girls that are interested in like purses and, you know, now it's like, I don't care about purses right now. You know, I told my husband, I said, no, no more, no more purses. Um, I, I want to fill our gym out. <laughs> well, that's when you just got to send a picture of like you and your husband to the guy who's selling them and be like, yeah, we'll take it for a hundred bucks. And then he'll just be so intimidated. He'll be like, okay, yeah, you, you guys can have it for free then for free yeah. then basically. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but yeah, that is, that is ridiculous. I mean, we've had some people that are, yeah, they're even like going on Craigslist and finding stuff, but yeah, it's a, it is a mad scramble. Yeah. But even on Craigslist, it's expensive. Yep. I mean, wow. Just give me a break. You know, no one's really 
but but the thing no i was gonna say no one's really gonna buy that but th yeah there are people that are gonna buy that because they're desperate you know um they they just want to train so um we're kind of fortunate that um we have our gym here now you know it's it's pretty co complete actually the only thing i don't have is i don't have a um i'm looking for a step step master or a stair master but for cardio i can just go outside and do my cardio because we have a lot of hills so if, i can do that for now but uh other than that you know it, it's it's a great gym you know but I'll, I'll still continue to keep my membership of course at the local gold gym because we love the people there and we want to support the um the uh, folks that that work there you know so uh, we, we continue our membership there but we'll go to the gym there maybe once every week once yeah because uh we like to, we like to see our friends there too you know well and i think couldn't think of a better way to end the podcast we'll have her give us a tour of her gym then to end it so that everyone can see how great because i mean she showed it i mean it briefly appeared when we were getting things set up here and it's it's a very impressive setup it's definitely better than the gym that i have down in my basement but mine is just a maintaining gym that's not a gym where i'm not going to make any gains in that gym but it's it, it is amazing but before this pandemic hit i mean what were your what were your plans like for this year in bodybuilding well we uh Believe it or not, I was I was training to go and do uh, Puerto Rico. I started my prep first week of February uh, with a new coach, and um, so we started prep. So to to let me see, maybe a month in, they we got the schedule and it got changed. Um, so the show now has got moved to August. So we decided to change it up, and um, my first show is going to be in July in Chicago, uh, July third, fourth. Uh, in Chicago, so <clears throat> which is kind of good because uh, I was leading down. I mean, speed, the weight was really coming down. It was down to like one twenty nine, I think one twenty eight. And so um, the coach Shelby Stearns is my coach, so he switched it up. So he started giving me more food. I'm like, oh my god! But at first, I couldn't handle it. It was so much, so much food. Believe it or not, this is the only prep I got so much food. The carbs, and then the cardio got cut out completely i still don't do cardio right now so and i'm still lean so we switch it up i guess it, it's a it's a blessing maybe um switch it up i've gotten i've gained a little bit of uh i'm a lot thicker now so um i guess there's a reason for everything you know um my body's gotten used to the heavy training so we switched it up he switched it up every four days he switches it up or he uh, he looks at me and um he tweaks my diet if it needs to be tweaked, and uh, I made a little bit of, um, I've come a little bit thicker since we kind of up the calories a lot, <laughs> and so I've been enjoying this prep. I mean, I, well, to believe it or not, I was only doing initially thirty minutes of cardio, and then now he took the cardio off, up the up the food. I'm like, wow, and I was I was still leaning down. I'm like, he must be a magician. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just in awe, you know. I'm like, uh, this guy is really, he, he, really, he's really good. My previous coach also, um, was a great coach, but after a while, I think, you know, like doctors, you're gonna need to switch it up a little bit, and um, and this is gonna be my, I feel it's gonna be my last season. I want to try, you know, something different, and I think I've exhausted my other coach too, and I've only been, I've been with him like for three years, and there's, you know, sometimes. I feel like, you know, um, it works both ways. Maybe he's exhausted with me and I'm, you know. So I said, let me just switch it up. And I've been, I, I looked, I looked over other coaches and I've been following Shelby Stearns or Starnes. And, um, man, I was so impressed with the, um, his competitors. So let me just, let me just try this man. So I, I emailed him, see if he's willing to take me on. And it's like, sure enough. And, um, we, you know, he, I, I, I like him because he's no nonsense, you know, and, and I'm one of those that don't cheat either. So I'm, I'm a pretty uh, easy client, believe it or not. You know, he tells me what to do. And I don't even have, I do it. I don't have to think about it. Um, if it's more food, I said, oh, okay, fine. I'll do whatever you want. You know, if it's less food, I complain. I don't complain, no cheats. It's okay. You know, it's the process that we all go through. If, if you're going to complain, why do, why do it, you know? So it's for me, it's a challenge for myself. <clears throat> but uh, on that, everything's good, you know. Do you think that being ex-military, that sort of no-nonsense attitude, really gels well with you? 
Um, yeah, I, I think so. A lot of it has to be that discipline. And um, the fact that um, if you cheat, you're just cheating yourself, you know. Um, and I and I never, I, I've never really complained. Even in the military, like, you, I just, whatever, you, you know, the leader says, you know, sometimes you kind of think about it a little bit, you know, but everybody does that, you know, that's just human nature. But for the most part, I like the fact that I don't really think about what I need to eat, you know, and I've been eating the same thing since um, first week of February, you know, just more of it, you know. <clears throat> and uh, my son, my son was looking, because I, I've been cooking too with this, with this pandemic. I've been um, cooking my family all kinds of different recipes and stuff. They've been enjoying it. And so I cook for them and then I just watch them eat. And then my son goes, Mom, mom, you're not tired of that food? I said, nope. <laughs> it, it's just a tool. And the, the beauty about it is the fact that that's how I eat anyway normally. You know, my oatmeal, my eggs, my eggs, egg whites, chicken, beef. I get beef too, believe it or not. I still get potatoes and rice. Then I haven't cut that off yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but yeah, they, they've been enjoying my, my uh, time in the kitchen. Man, I've, I've been making them really nice stuff. I, I go on the, uh, I go and search for recipes and then I find a recipe that looks good and then just go and cook it. I should give me, give it my own twist and they haven't complained yet. <laughs> Cause if they do, guess what? That's it. Mom's not going to cook no more. <laughs> Oh, please, please. If you were my mom too, I wouldn't complain about anything too. I'd just be like, yes, yeah. Oh, this tastes, this tastes great. You're the greatest cook of all time. Are you, are you kidding me? Yeah. But I, we do have to talk about the elephant in the room. Cause the last time we talked on, you had blonde hair and now your hair color is a little bit different. So what's the story behind that? Well, the fact that, you know, the hairdressers <laughs> can't go to the beauty shop right now, the hair salon. And so, uh, it's a good thing. I found this hair color. I used to color my husband's hair. So I found this box of hair color underneath. <laughs> And I couldn't, I, I had to color my hair. It, I mean, it was just gray. It was uh, just, it was just poking out there, hurt, blinding my eyes, believe it or not. So I went ahead and experimented with the color. I haven't colored my hair by myself since, what, 20 years ago? Now I have to do it. And then like the cut, you know, it was shorter last time we saw each other. It was so short. Now half of it is short and the other is long because the way my hair was cut, it was shaved <laughs> now look yeah. look at it now <laughs> hey you're gonna look like farrah fawcett by the end of this whole quarantine <laughs> my god you know hey at least i don't have to pay a while for my hair right spend almost 300 dollars for a hair <laughs> oh it, it, i mean that yeah it's just absolutely ridiculous but we were talking about this before too i mean there's been a whole meat shortage and i mean bodybuilders are the number one people that are going to suffer more most from that you were talking about the struggle with that how have you been getting along with this meat shortage that's been seemed to have been going on well, I tell you what, every, every, maybe every two weeks, I, I go online, I go into Costco, and I, I buy, the, what, plus two days ago, I had a delivery for like $400 worth of beef. Yeah, and Costco, you know, but chicken, I, I order chicken too. There's no chicken to be had. No chicken in the commissary because we go to the base too. No chicken whatsoever. But they put chicken nuggets on the, in place of chicken breast. Do you believe that? <laughs> I, I just rolled my eyes. I mean, like, who eats chicken nuggets? I guess, you know, kid, kids do, you know. But come on now, back in our normal life, people don't buy chicken breast. They don't, they don't like chicken breast. They buy, go for the wings and the drumsticks. But now even the chicken breast is all gone. So, and this is, that was my second visit to the commissary. So now my, my son, I tell my son whenever he passes the store, um, stop by and see if there's any chicken breast to buy it on a, his way over um, because there's no chicken breast. So every time we see it, you know, and the limit is usually two if you do see it. So the limit is two. And and I can understand that, you know, you don't want to go and buy because there's other people that need it too. So if their limit is two, we get the two. We don't complain, you know, just go back again the next day and get two more packs. But we've been managing okay with uh, without it, you know, if it runs out. You know, well, I have a lot of fish, yeah. so I can revert to fish. 
well, I'm sort of lucky in that way too, where I have a neighbor who is a huge hunter and he has like 10 years worth of deer venison in his freezer. Oh, wow. And he, he just says, if you ever need anything, just come on over. It's, it's all yours. So we've just been, I've been eating venison for a lot for the last time. So yeah, we are, we are lucky that way. That guy was prepared for this. I don't know. I mean, he's just a, he's just a huge, a huge deer hunter. So yeah, he, he has been really nice to us and good to us there. So it's always nice to have those options, but you talked about upping your calories before when you're getting ready for these shows. What were your calories at before and how high did they go up to? Well, uh, carbs are normally what gets cut. Norm, um, when you start prepping for a show, a lot of carbs. This time around, you know, like, uh, uh, last rep, I would get maybe um, my my carbs would be like a half a cup maybe uh, per serving. This time around, the coach, it, he, he opted to a cup and a half, right? This was about for two, three weeks straight, I was eating a cup and a half per serving. That's a lot of oatmeal, you know? And then my... My, I was getting potatoes every meal. I ate five meals. I, I was getting potatoes. I was getting um, jasmine rice. And then he increased one more meal uh, in addition to my, so I had six meals. And I'm like, wow, wh- where, <laughs> where do I fit this in, you know? Because I was getting used to just the lower portions. But, um, and and I'm at first, like, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I'm going to get fat again. I went all the way down to 128, 129, you know. I started at 151 in February, I think February 3rd. So I went down to about three, about three weeks ago. I was down to like 129, three, four weeks ago. I was down to 128, 129. And then now I'm up to about 137. Um, so, but yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's a lot of fun. I'm not a very big tall person i'm only five three so i'm pretty short um but i tell you what i got used to those carbs right away <laughs> yeah that's that's i mean geez that fluctuation yeah that's that's huge and i mean i'm six three myself so i'm a full foot taller than you and i i'm only about 200 pounds so yeah that's that for me that that fluctuation is that's that's amazing but yeah that's just that just shows, you know, when you cut carbs and when you do all these restrictions, what what the body can do. But are you enjoying not having to do cardio? Because for me, I mean, cardio, that is the bane of my existence where I just hate yeah. it more than anything else. It, it's funny because last season, I was like a cardio queen. I was doing cardio maybe um, an hour, sometimes an hour and a half a day. So I would cut it in half, you know, do some in the morning and some in the evening. And then this prep, I've only done... 30 minutes when I started my prep with this uh, with Shelby. I was only doing 30 minutes. And then he cut it down to 20 and then now nothing. I'm not doing any cardio. I'm pretty sure that he'll I'll go back to doing cardio um, a couple weeks before my my show <clears throat> um, to get the conditioning. But um, I'm still lean. You know, I, I just like, how does this man do this? <laughs> but I get fats also, believe it or not. You know, I, I eat my, I drink, I put olive oil on my food, my coconut oil, my MCT oil. So I get fats, I get egg yolk, you know, and the steak has fats in it. So um, I get fats as well as carbs and then my protein. I, I get my protein shakes, you know. He uh, recommended this other kind of protein that, that uh, I've never used before. It take, It's so good. Um, true nutrition. Man, you should try it. I, I think I've been uh, telling other people about it and they, they, they're enjoying it too. Um, so it doesn't make me blow and, and it, believe it or not, it's a lot, it's like maybe $2 cheaper than what I was using before. <laughs> but uh, it's a, man, it, I've just been enjoying this prep, believe it or not. You know, I still, I, I'm, I'm strong. I'm like, I feel like bionic. I texted him or um, on my check-in, I said, I feel like bionic woman because I was eat, I'm eating, you know. I'm eating now. I feel like a bionic woman. I'm strong. Um, so food, man, food, food does the body good. Uh, I don't care what they say. When the people are trying to lean down and and they strip themselves all the, all these calories and no carbs, you know, it's like carb carb is your carb is your friend. Believe it or not, fat is your friend. When you're dieting, you still need that that stuff. When you're gonna lean down, you need that. When you're gonna gain weight, you need that. So it's just how you manage your nutrition. And uh, I'm lucky that um, my coach knows how to manage mine, you know. So he, um, like I said, I check in every four days, give him, send him pictures. <clears throat> Actually, my son um, made a studio here. So now I have good pictures to send him. Uh, photo studio area here in my basement. He's setting me up. 
my, my, my husband and my son setting me up here. <laughs> so, yeah, so now I have uh, a place I can take pictures and I can, I can send my coach, you know. But um, food, food does it back to the food. Food does body good, you know. Don't deprive yourself too. If that Twinkie you say, if you want that Twinkie, take a bite out of it, then that's it. You know, a lot of people um, are not competitors, but yet, you know, they still uh, strive to be healthy and, and watch their diet and exercise. And then they make the mistake of like depriving themselves some of the stuff they really, really want to eat, you know, and then they're miserable. Well, you don't have to be miserable. Like I said, you know, if you want that, take a bite and then just back off. At least you tried it already, you know. And then every time when you take a bite of that, you think about, oh, am I, uh, am I doing the right thing, you know. It's like, well, don't feel guilty. Just take a bite and then put it away. And think about how you're going to look if you really continue on to watching what, what you eat, um, your exercise, you know. Because um, not everybody wants to be a bodybuilder. You know, but every, you know, a lot of people want to be healthy, but don't deprive yourself because when you deprive yourself, guess what? You know what they, you know what they say about closet eaters? You know, those people that are closet eaters. Oh, I watch everything I eat, you know, and I'm like, well, why are you just getting fat? That's because they pretend, you know, they tell you, yeah, I'm, I'm watching my diet. But then at, at the end of the day, when everybody else is in bed, they go to the closet the pantry and see what they have for the pantry that they can have and then they eat all up and then the next morning you know it's like they feel guilty and then they starve themselves and then they do it again so if you want that just just take a bite out of it you know um everybody's normal you know just take a bite out of it and then that's it don't don't do it again you know do it again the next week <laughs> see but, See, now I wish I had that willpower because I'm one of those people where if I take that one bite, that one bite is going to end up me being just swallowing that one whole, that whole Twinkie hole basically in my one bite that I do. So I'm going to find a way to, to cop out of it. But no, it's, yeah, I, I, I agree with you too, where it's like everything in moderation because I've heard so many stories, especially some of the competitors that I've had on here when they first got started, they really struggled with that where they don't realize that, hey, you're, the, the body needs to have, you know, some fats and some sugars every once in a while. I mean, if you go completely cold turkey, it's like, that's not going to be healthy and you're not going to last. It's just, it's no. not possible. No, and then sometimes, uh, so you, you you deprive your body of all these, you know, you've been dieting for a long time, and then you, you reach a plateau that it's not moving anywhere. It's not going, you know, anywhere. So I'm thinking that your body needs to needs that little bit of a jolt. So it probably needs what you're craving, you know. It needs that chocolate or cookie or whatever, you know, get it back, get, get, the, get the spike back up, you know. So um, my point is, you know, yeah, if if you if you feel if you're feeling like you need something, you know, um, like for me, I'm I'm at that point now. I don't I don't I'm not like craving for anything yet. But if it comes up, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna email my coach and say, hey, coach, you know, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. What should I do? You know, um, cause I'm um I, I I'm not begging for a treat meal right now. You know, I'm eating I'm eating very good. You know, I'm not. I know what my goals are and stuff like that, but for a normal person, you know, if, if you feel like you're depriving yourself, just go for it, you know, just, just eat it. Just, you know, just, it, don't worry about it. You know, you're, it, it, it's okay. You're normal. Tomorrow is another day. Start all over again. You know, it's like they say, if you, if you fall off the horse, you jump back on that horse again. Same thing. Yeah. No, it's it, absolutely. And that's with a lot of things with life and bodybuilding as well. But what do you think is one body part that you've improved on the most since we last talked nine months ago? Um, my, um, my legs, my legs, I think my legs have gotten just a little, they're not that big, you know, just a little bit bigger and then a little bit more proportion, I believe that. And uh, I've been trying to put it just a little bit more on my shoulders. Um, so I think, I think that's what it is. And then, um, I think my my abs have improved maybe because my diet has, <laughs> my diet has gotten better and I, I didn't get too far off from my um my stage weight anyway I've only I've only went 15 20 pounds um so I I didn't get real um bulky you know there's a difference between bulking up and getting some real lean mass versus bulking up and getting fat you know so when um, when I was done with the competitions last season, I just went and started just eating more, but um, not not really bad food, you know, um, just more of the good kind of food. 
And I, I did get my nachos because I love nachos. <laughs> I, I did get my nachos once in a while, you know. But um, I, I didn't go like, like whole hog because, you know, it's really hard once you put on all that weight to take it off. And if you put on um, weight that's good kind of weight, the mass, it's, it's fine. But if you just put on a lot of fluff, it's so hard. You know, especially, like I said, um, with my age, you know, your metabolism kind of slows down a little bit. But um, just just kind of watch your, 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 you know, your diet, you know. So, um, but, yeah, the most improved, I think, improvement I made, I think, is my legs, my, my calves, you know. Um, other than that, um, the whole body needs improvement. <laughs> See, that's the one thing I find funny about bodybuilders. She's 59 years old, about to be 60, and she looks like that. And she's like, I still need improvements, which is, I mean, that just shows you the dedication and the drive that they have. Because I was going to say, like, we made the joke before, her upper body's basically taking up the whole camera. We can barely fit her in, especially her traps, too, which were her, her big part. But, yeah, the abs, too. I remember you told last time that that was a part that you struggled with. So I'm glad that they've been getting better. But one thing that I found, you know, it affects everyone during this pandemic is just the uncertainty and the thing that I think is, especially for bodybuilders, like they don't know if these shows are going to be on. Like your show in July, there's not for certain, there's not a certainty that that's going to happen. So yeah. how are you dealing with that mentally, knowing that hey, you know, I could work my butt off these next two months, but then it could all, it could all just end up being where they say, oh hey, you know, we're going to have to delay this maybe till like August or August or September. How are you dealing with that mentally, just re- preparing yourself for the fact that that might be possible? You know, it 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 it, it doesn't it doesn't really bother me because you cannot control what you can't control the other thing is you just continue to train like uh, like i said i was prepping for puerto rico and it was supposed to happen in a few weeks in um may i think middle of may and um it's, I'm, I'm not going to stress about it uh because there'll be other shows down the road um so i just continue to train and then if they cancel that i'll just make adjustment i'll just talk to my coach again and make another adjustment because if you stress about it stress you know cortisol your cortisol levels go up you know but there's some stuff you can't control you know the the main focus right now is for everybody to be safe and i we follow the rules you know the social distancing okay whatever works but we, i do believe though and my husband and i talked about the economy needs to get back um because i do worry about how our our you know what's going to happen with 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 or some of my friends, you know, that don't have, some of them have their own business, you know, and they, they don't have jobs. We're very fortunate. We're both retired. So, you know, we have income coming in. And, um, but some of those people, you know, that, that work for themselves, um, I worry about that, you know, because um, I don't know when, what's really going to happen. But as far as, um, you know, bodybuilding is concerned, my husband, I think is more concerned than I am because he's like, why they cancel the show? And I said, well, there's, <laughs> there's another. So we're programmed to do three shows this season. So I'm going to do a uh, first show that I'm programmed to do is the, uh, the Chicago pro and then Tampa pro. And then we'll do the, uh, uh, Linda Murray or I think the Chicago Linda and then Tampa one, but those three shows anyway. And, uh, so if, if that gets canceled, I'm not going to stress. Okay. We'll just continue to March and, um, there's another show. You know, and and yeah, we've been working our butt off, you know, um, trying to prep for this, but you can't control it. You know, Uh, what are you going to do? So I'm just going to move on. If they cancel Chicago, then there's uh, the Murray and then there's Tampa. And so hopefully, you know, um, we get to see a show. (laughs) I've been I've been kind of missing going at least to the local shows because, you know, even when I'm not competing, I we go to the MPC shows and support our NPC family, um, because that's very important. But um, what are you going to do? You know, so I just tell my fellow competitors, just go ahead and continue to train. Uh, Follow your coach's advice, you know, uh, eat well. Um, But the most important thing is just um, your family, you know, surround yourself with your family now. And all the time, a lot of people, you know, went back during the normal days, a lot of people don't have time for their family. You know, they're always... Working, um, oh, they'll see each other maybe in the dinner table if that. Now, you know, they're they're together in the house. Go do something with each other, you know. Um, take up Scrabble. Or, I was even thinking of getting, buying a bingo set um, on Amazon 
and maybe playing bingo with my grand my grandkids when they come over. You know, just doing something. Um, so just make time now. You no, know, now the time to kind of bond with your family. You know, um, do something with them, even if it's out for a walk with your family. You know, make some time now. Well, knowing that everyone has a lot more free time now, are you sort of trying to get your grandkids into, you know, starting to, you know, get a little bit more exercise in, especially during this time when they're probably just locked up in their houses a lot? Well, they, um, they come over and, um, you know, they come down and, and, and they're both dancers. And so their dance studio is also closed. So they've been coming down and they've been stretching downstairs here, you know. Um, but they, uh, started, they started their back to... Uh, uh, school now, what they call this, since the distancing, school distancing or whatever. So they're back to school again. Um, oh, so they're like actually online. in a physical school? No, online. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say what, that. They call, what they call that kind of school? It's like online learning because I have, I have two yeah. teachers that are doing that too and they're just, they're, they absolutely hate it, but yeah, it has they to be done, it. but yeah. They, they don't really like it, but at least they're doing something, you know. But um, the, uh, the grandkids love they come here every night, you know, my, my son and daughter-in-law and grand, the grand girls, they come here every night, you know, so we get to see them every night. Um, so we spend a lot of time with the family and stuff. Um, so that's, you know, there's nothing else to do really, you know. Yeah. Which that's so important to spend the time with your family, especially during crises like this. And I got to say, if you have any pets, the pets are probably just absolutely loving it. I mean, ours is having the time of its life because it's oh, like yeah. my owners are never leaving me. This is the greatest thing ever. Like I'm getting all the attention that I've ever wanted. Yeah, they're just... They are just absolutely. Yeah, my my dog's the same way now. He he he's constantly not. He's he's upstairs sleeping right now. I didn't bring him down. He, he doesn't like coming down the basement. I don't know what it is at the basement, but he um uh, he follows me everywhere. He is so small. We have a little pickanies, and he thinks that he's the boss. So he gets carried around because he gets spoiled with you know the grandkids coming. My son spoils. My grand my uh, daughter in law spoils, and they carry him around like a baby, and and so he he's loving it. Believe it or not, he just, oh Lord. <laughs> we have a little Cavachon too, and yeah, that thing, yeah, that thing controls every single aspect of our lives. So yeah, that's, I, I totally, I totally understand that. But I'm going to play devil's advocate real quick here. And you said that this was maybe going to be your last season. If let's say they all of a sudden announced like, hey, all the shows for this year are going to get canceled. Would you come back then another year just to finally get that last year done? Well, depending on how I look, because, um, you know, if, if, um, like, Right now, I'm looking pretty. Um, I'm looking pretty good because um, the the body changes, you know. Pretty good, everyone. <laughs> yeah, but um, if 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 um, my husband, you know, my husband's very supportive, and my son, and you know, the family's supportive. So, um, if the body can still take the uh, dieting and stuff like that, and if they talk to the coach, and you know, if he thinks that it's okay. Um, then, then I, I'll do it again. I, I enjoy the sport. It's for 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 me. It's I love the challenge, <laughs> and I think I told you this the last time we spoke. I just love the challenge. It it um it doesn't matter if I'm. I mean, of course, everybody wants to be first place, you know. But I just love the challenge. I love the diet. I love the workouts. You know, I love meeting people. Um, my Iron Sisters are they're just the sweetest women, you know. Um, so. I just love the challenge. So if they cancel it this year, like there's always next year, but just depends on how I look. If I continue to train the way I'm training and um, follow the diet and the advice of the coach, then I'll, I'll do it again. Probably. I got to say, you probably have the best attitude out of any guests that I've ever had on. Cause we have so many people that are just like, you know, either they win or die. That's like their, that's like their attitude. But I love your attitude, which is like, I'm just going to work my butt off. And I love the process. And I remember last time you were on here, you talked about like, I may not win, ever win first place, but I just enjoy it. And you know, you just, you told me a story about how you were telling a friend, you know, it's like, just try getting on stage yourself and competing against the best in the world. And that's enough of a, that's enough of a, you know, payoff for you. And I, and I love that because it's, it's like this sport is so demanding enough as it is that I always said, you know, just to be able to go through a prep, you've already won in more ways than, you know, in so many more ways than actually just winning the thing just because of what this lifestyle entails. So that's just a great attitude to have. And I really, and I appreciate you sharing that because so many people listen to this podcast and they just get that idea that all bodybuilders, all they want to do is win and they, and nothing else. So I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's you, you know, it's, like I said, you have, you have to love, enjoy what you're doing. And for me, um, for, for, for me doing it is, uh, you know, I'm winning already, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm winning against Father Time, you know, 
um, my my uh, my granddaughters, you know, they love their grandmother because they're always showing their grandmother off. You know, when they when they they're in their computers at school, they're really like, "Who's that?" And they say, that's my grandmother. It's like that's not your grandmother. So, um, you know, they they um they enjoy the fact that I I, I do this. You know, my husband just he just he he adores adores me. You know, my son is so supportive. He's just like, "You go, mom. That's my mom." <laughs> you know. And uh, so, um, to me, that that's that's winning already, you know. Um, and and the fact that I can go out and motivate, like at the at the uh, Gold's Gym where I work out, some of these younger girls they come up to me and they they're just so they're just motivated because you know they're looking at them and they're looking at me and like they said I train like a beast, you know. And um, I told them, you know, you just have to put your mind into it. Um, because as long as you enjoy what you're doing, you're a winner already, you know. Uh, and like I said, I love being next to my my iron sisters, you know. I, I just I, and I, I like to follow them online because I learn a lot from them, you know. And I learn a lot from normal people too, you know. Um, just being, I learned that you know you don't have to be an an, an or a, in the sport. A lot of you know, I, I think you can be still nice and um, be approachable because some. Some of them like didn't want to approach me at first because they they thought that I wouldn't say hi and and then when I'm usually the one that smiles first to them you know it's like hey how was your workout and they were like oh my gosh she's talking to me. <laughs> you know because um, it's it just you know I, I'm learning from them that you know um, they can't accept you some of them at first don't want to accept you because they think they're kind of like um, I'll probably be like like a, you know, and just kind of like shrug them up. I'm like, no, I'm not. You know, I always try to make time for them if they they want to, they want some kind of guidance on their workouts and stuff like that. Or they email me and they say, hey, uh, you know, what do you think of this diet? You know, and uh, first of all, I'm not a nutritionist, but I, you know, it's like, well, this is what I would do. Um, but this is just a guide. This is, you know, um, but I'm always willing to help, you know, someone. Um, you don't, you know, I'm a, I'm already a winner just by doing this, you know, the sport. Um, so a trophy, uh, to me, yes, it's nice to get a, a first place trophy, but that's just a trophy, you know, um, and I'm a winner in my own heart, you know. Well, and, uh, of course she's already won against Father Time. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone look at her. I mean, she looks better. I'm 25 years old. She looks better than 99.99% of 25-year-old guys. It's like, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And that's that should just be enough as it is. I mean, I, I told her the last time, it's like, if I looked like you, geez, I'd be going sleeveless every single day. I mean, I'd just be walking around just basically like this the whole time. It, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's it's absolutely, that's why having a guest like her on where it's just like, it just defies logic where you're just like, how is this even possible? And it's just so inspiring and it's just, Having her on is just such a blessing because we can show that, you know, at any age, you can look amazing and absolutely incredible. And she is just living proof of that. But when it comes to your workouts, I mean, are you still working out the same type when it comes to like your schedule at home as you were before? Have you had to mix things up a little bit when it comes to, you know, what days you train certain things? Or has it somewhat been the same? It's it's uh, the same. And believe it or not, I'm more focused here at, in my home gym because, you know, I don't have to go and, and um different machines and somebody's on there, you know, here, everything's right here. You know, my husband and I, we train together. Um, we still train together, even if, if we're here, you know, he waits for me as I get everything ready and I go downstairs. I still dress like I'm going to the gym. <clears throat> you know, I wake up in the morning, I put my face on everything, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going down to the basement, but that's my normal for me. I'm going to go work. I'm going to go to work. To me, the gym is where I go to work. And so, um, I still train the same, you know, we went and bought the same, um, there's more equipment, of course, at the gym, but we went and got our leg press, you know, we got a squat rack, you know, we got everything we need here. So I'm more focused um, because I'm not running around looking for a machine to, you know, to use what we have is what we have. So, um, yeah, we still, you know, on Mon Mondays, we do chess, National Chess Day. <laughs> We're doing that here too. So, but yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm more, I'm pretty much more focused here, I think, now that we're quarantined in our little basement. <laughs> and if we were to follow you around for a week, what would, so what does your weekly split look like? Um, okay, on Mondays, I do a, a chest and calves. And then on Tuesdays, we're switching it up next week because um, 
we were there our leg workout we, we switched the legs the quads and the hams so we, it was kind of uh too soon to do quads right after we did hams and you know so so next week was going to be chest and calves on monday and on tuesday it's going to be uh uh hams hams and buys and then it'll be shoulders and tries and then back and traps and then quads by itself and then on saturday and sunday i do i do my abs and you know i work a little bit again on shoulders because that to me i want to improve on shoulders a little bit but when i work out my shoulders on um on saturday or sunday i don't do the same routine that i would do on my normal shoulder day so if if i did the if i did arnold presses on on a shoulder day on on wednesday i wouldn't do that again on the weekend i change it up because that way you, you know you don't want to be doing the same thing that you're doing um so you're changing it up but um but that's normally what our workout uh routine consists of um so it's been working pretty good have you found have you found that you were trying to change up or have are you deciding to change up your posing routine a little bit for this season as opposed to last season yeah i'm i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to uh change it up this season and back i'm going to um i'm going to go ahead and get uh and and uh, talk to ken wallet he's uh one of the top posing coaches here oh everyone says that he's the best yeah everyone highly recommends him yeah it was funny because I think we were meant to um, meet each other because we went to, when my husband and I went to the Olympia, uh, there the last Olympia, I sat with next to him right and the bus. I mean, who would ever think that, you know, Ken, I would be sitting next to Ken, right? So that's an omen right there. I think it's meant for me and uh, him to get connected. So I told him I was going to look him up. And then we talked about um, a coach, you know, because he was asking me who was coaching me. And I said, well, Right now, I'm kind of looking for a coach. And I told him, I said, I was thinking of Shelby. And then he said, uh, he's great. You, he, he's great. So, um, you know, I, I went with his recommendation. And then, I, like I said, I've been following Shelby also online. You know, and then some of my friends have been using him as well. And uh, so anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and, and um, uh, get with uh, Ken and uh, see if he can help me with my uh, posing because, you know, even though even though you're a pro, you still need every pro needs help. You know, everybody needs help. But as far as my routine is concerned, I think once I get my mandatories, you know, right, because I think you have to be a really good poser to really accentuate, you know, uh, your body, you know. And um, I think I feel that I kind of need a little bit of help from that. But uh, the posing routine, um, I'm always up to, uh, <laughs> you know, shaking my booty sometimes, but. I've been thinking more of my, and my husband doesn't seem to agree with me. I like going the slow, classical route, you know, but he said, it's a bodybuilding show. You want, you want kind of like loud and, you know, rock and all that. But I don't know. I, I feel like, I, I think I can probably accentuate my body more if I go the classical, slower version, you know, that not dancing or whatever, but just swaying, you know, uh, to how my, how I'm feeling the music, so that I might I might change. I was thinking since my uh, my granddaughter is a dancer, you know, maybe enlist her in helping me, the, you know, ha- a change up, you know, maybe show how I can flex my muscle more. <laughs> she's, only, she's only 13, but you know, she she can probably help grandma. <laughs> you know, I can go from doing a classical routine, you know, and then funk it up a little bit. So we'll see, you know. Because uh, in the past, I've always kind of uh, winged it a little bit, you know, and it, it's like nobody knows that I'm because when I get on stage, there's, I, I tell them I just winged that one, you know, the routine. And they said, no, you, you did. And I said, yes, I did. <laughs> so I think I'm going to be just for this last season. If it's my last season, I'm just trying to try to change it up a little bit. and Let's see what happens, you know. Yeah. And, and that sounds amazing. Yeah. Having that little funk it up thing. Yeah. I can totally, that, I mean, we've had some people try that and it, and I, and I really do enjoy some of those routines because yeah, they really, they really do tend to stand out. But we talked, you talked about this a couple of times and I love bringing this up because especially in bodybuilding, I mean, it's one of those rare sports where the, the competitors care so much about each other. Like you talk about your iron sisters and a lot of it is, you know, I like to chalk it up to, you know, when you guys, you guys know what it takes to get to this level and you know, the sacrifice and the suffering that has to happen for you to step on that stage. But how important is it for you too to, you know, 
know that you have, you know, like your iron sisters that really do have your back and they really do care about you. And it just, it just seems like it's just such a great community to be a part of. Yeah. I mean, it's the, they're very supportive, you know, of course it's a competition, right? But for the most part, they're very supportive, you know, um, <clears throat> I don't know if I mentioned it last time when I was in the Tampa pro and I started to cramp up really, really bad. So Janine Lankowski, you know, she had salt and um, she said, here, take this, ha you know, take this because it, it helped me with their cramping. And, I, you know, I'm like, wow, um, here she is, you know, we're going to go on stage, you know, where it's a competition, right? But she's willing to do that. And then like um, Polly Nelson, you know, she's one of my favorites. She and I got a pro card together at, uh, at Pitt in Pittsburgh. And um, she just, we saw each other at the Olympia. She's just so like, she told she told uh what she had one of her friends with her and she said she has an awesome back you know and um it's like they're just very um complimentary with each other you know um believe it or not it's just um uh, it's just it's just a a good feeling to know that yeah it's a competition but everybody's there to just express their their body you know uh, and show it also with with you know their they're all kind of like a little clip together, you know. Um, I don't know. It's a I can't I can't explain it. It's just um, it's a good feeling to know that these these women have have done gone through the same struggle, probably more more than others, you know. But everybody's there and we have a good time, you know. And it, it, it's like maybe you see each other once a year, but um, when we're when we see each other, it, it's like you know a long lost friend, you know. Well, and for anyone out there who doesn't realize, I mean, Janine Lankowski, Lankowski, we talked about her last time. She's the one poser that really probably doesn't need to work on her posing, where she can no. literally just go. <laughs> she's she is wildly renowned as probably the best po poser on the planet for female bodybuilding. Not maybe even male bodybuilding too, but I mean, she can literally just go out there and just make it up on the whim, and she'll probably win best poser. Just I don't. I've seen videos of her, and it's it, it's shocking. She's like number one. yeah, she's the number one poser. It's like yeah. it's robotic, but in a good way, where it's just like oh my god, like I don't know, like it doesn't seem like it's it doesn't. She doesn't look human when she does it because it's just so everything is just so perfect and it's yeah it is it is absolutely amazing but it's I would get it. she she just she would just come out like uh one one Tampa uh, T Tampa Pro was not this was last season she goes I just made that up her routine I mean it's like she she asked me which song which song do I like right so I I, I told her which one that I, I like and then um anyway she uh <laughs> she just made up her routine right there. Like we're gonna go on stage there pretty soon, and she just kind of like make mix it up, you know. I'm like, so she's she really is that good, you know. I'm so I'm I'm happy to say she's a she's a pretty good friend of ours, you know. Janine, she's yeah. I'm blessed to have her in, in, in my life. You know? Oh, yeah. I've contacted her a few weeks ago about coming on the podcast, so we'll see if she wants to come on. And, yeah, that would be great, too, just to talk to her about about her posing and, you know, yeah, just how she invents it on the women. Somehow it still, it still is the best. I mean, that's absolutely amazing. But I would get torn apart in the comments because I – so in January, for New Year's, I asked everyone, like, what is one body part that they plan on working on the most this year? And the options were – arms abs back legs and arms won by like 15 percent. so i gotta ask every guest that i have on since then so what do you train for arms to get them to look the way that they are maria what does your arm workout consist of my arm work um uh, for, for triceps i uh, you know i'd like the the uh i do the ropes and i do um uh, um uh, what do you call it the um close grip presses i mean the, those are really um, muscle builders, and then I do the um, skull crushers, and for 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 biceps, I just always do the barbell, dumbbell, you know, the old school type, and I I just learn to contract my muscles, just always contract those muscles because it's not so much about the weight, you know, it's how you use the weight. So um, a lot of people put so much heavy weights there, you lift. And then they're like struggling and the weight's pulling them. It's like, they're, you're not getting anything out of that. So, um, do you do any like the cable curls or anything like that? Oh, I do that too. Uh, yeah. I do the cable curls. I, I do that as a finishing movement, actually, you know, after I'm done with all the heavy movements, the dumbbell barbell, um, then I do the cables as a finishing movement. 
did you always sort of have that mind to muscle connection or was it something that you really had to work on? How long until you really developed that where you can, cause so many people, like you said, yeah, you can be curling a five pound dumbbell. And if you have that mind to muscle connection, you can get just as good of a workout as anyone doing anything else. Yeah. I, I, I think I developed that maybe seven, nine years into my training, you know, where, uh, yeah. Um, where it's like, I don't worry anymore about, you know, um, what people say, how much weights I'm lifting, you know, cause, when you start, everybody wants to lift heavy, and they it looks so good to lift all that heavy weight. But if you just go like this, and you're not really getting anything out of it, you know, and mine, it's like, you know what, I'm not even going to worry about what people say. I'm just going to worry about me. And if if um, thinking about that, my muscle connection, if this is how it's going to work for me, this is what I'm going to do. And so what if sometimes they'll come over and say, hey, put some weight on there. Um, it's, uh, just say, oh, okay, <laughs> fine. Um, but I think that that's what it is. You know, it's, it's like I said, it's not how much weight, it's how you use the weights. Because, man, at, speaking of the weights, this one guy at the gym, oh, my God, he's Ryan. You should have seen the amount of weights he put on that leg, that leg press. And then I was going to be impressed, right? I thought I was going to be impressed. I'm like, I can't wait to see. It. Oh, my God. He went like this. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's when I really, really turned around and rolled my eyes. And I'm just like, I'm just, I I was blown away. <laughs> I was so not impressed. We all know those people in the gym that try that. Yeah, I cannot, I cannot tell that enough. But when it, when you're talking about, you know, that mind muscle, is a lot of it just time under tension that you like to do too? Yeah. A lot of it is that. Yeah. Um, and it, and it's funny, my, um, my husband now is learning that. You don't have to use all that weight, honey. Because <laughs> he was watching how I, you know, he uh, been training together for so long now. So he, he was watching how I train, and um, so he's 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 learning now. You know, because he was an old school, really heavy, heavy weights kind of guy. You know, but uh, there's a you know there's a lot to be said about that. You know, your joints get really messed up. Like, yeah, you knew you do need heavy weights. <clears throat> you need enough. To get to where you get that that uh, mind muscle connection that that tension, but you don't need to get to the point where it's going to really really hurt your joints. Especially you know um, the older you get, it's it's not very um it's not very good. You know you um guys are for sure a lot more stubborn when it comes to letting go of lifting heavy. I can I can I can verify that. Yeah, it yeah. takes a, it takes a little little bit longer for that. But do you still max out, or do you or you have you stopped doing that? Do you or do you still incorporate that at all? I, I incorporate that. Uh, once in a while, not not all the time. Uh, you know, once in a while, you wanna you wanna be able to go ahead and try to um, jolt your muscles. You know, you you max out. But um, I I don't do that so very often. You know, once in a while, I, I feel like I need to do that. You, you, I I I train um, the way I feel. You know, if I feel like I I that I can really really push it, I, I push it to the to the level. But if I feel like I need to back down a little bit. You know, I, I think I've trained, I've learned to train a lot smarter now, you know. So I know when I need to really, really push myself, you know. I mean, I, I push myself every single day, but not, I don't push myself to where I know that, hey, I might injure myself. Because um, if if I injure myself, guess what? That's two steps back, you know. So I'd rather, I'd rather um, train smart and, and, and learn not to just learn learn how to learn my body and, and know what I can, what, how I can push my body to the level where I need it to get. I don't need to go crazy and, and be show body or show off on the, the weights, you know, um, cause I'll just, I'll just be hurting myself. So I, I know, I know how it, what it takes, you know, to, I, I always imagine that that muscle working when I'm, when I'm, when I'm working out, you know, it's like, and, and I imagine how it's going to look. So if you just focus, focus and focus and not so much, not so much in the way is how you use that way. You know, you, you go very far. Oh, I mean, I couldn't agree more in those days when you do max out, what are some of your best lifts? I couldn't think of a better way to embarrass everyone as we get close to wrapping things up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or believe it or not, the, um, um, for shoulder presses, cause I've always wanted to do, a. Uh, you know the dumbbell shoulder presses. So I actually went up to um, 
and maybe to some people it was nothing, but to me it was something. Six sixty-five pound um, presses, and man, I I I, I was just I, I couldn't believe it when I did that. <laughs> and then um, my my um, chest press is you know two twenty-five. That's all that's all I've ever gone heavy. It's just two twenty-five, and um, I I did what six six reps on that, and and oh I, and I don't cheat either. You know how they cheat and they just go like this, or when they do shoulder presses and they just go like this. You know, I I, I go and do shoulder press when I press. It's not cheating because I've seen people where they just go like this, like that. And they, Whoa, what are you doing? You know. Um, so if if it's if if I uh, if I do that my reps and the last one, you know, is like a half ass job. <laughs> I don't count that. So because um, sometimes my husband will count that and it's like nope. That didn't count. <laughs> and then he says, you're too hard on yourself. But you know, that that's just me. You know, I, I, you have to be hard on yourself when you're getting ready for something, you know? So, but that, yeah, but that's just the way I am, you know? Um, my son said, because on, on weekends, I'm supposed to be off from the gym, really. And then um, he says, mom, you're an overachiever. <laughs> Uh, it's like it's okay you know i have fun with it and i love how you said for chest press only 225 where it's like oh my uh, yeah that's that's i mean i can do just a little bit more than that and again you guys i am minus almost what 35 years her age and it, that's i mean that's just a testament to just you know how in shape she is and how amazing how amazing it is but uh yeah and uh, i mean these two questions i ask every time that we have a, that I have a podcast so if we were to talk to you a year from today you know where would you like to be at in your life what are some current goals that you have i mean i know you have some shows that you're getting ready for but if we were to talk a year from today where would you like to be at right now where would i a year from now yeah probably be talking to you again right well, well absolutely <laughs> First of all, absolutely, she's going to be on a year from now, and you know she'll be sixty, and she'll probably look even better than she does now. And then we'll just be like, okay, that's not even possible. We'll have her on until she's like eighty-five, and she'll be having yeah, like right. she'll have like eighty-inch arms, and we'll just be like, okay, this is just not even fair. Like, what's going on here? So yeah. And I'll put a mask over my face. Yeah. <laughs> oh god! Actually, I was going to put a mask on today when I was talking to you so <laughs> for social distancing. <laughs> yeah, the minute that they find out that they can spread through computers, then I'm in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, we're crazy. It's always good to talk to you, though, Ryan. Oh, ab- absolutely. And I mean, I just got to do my last spiel here because honestly, like I said, everyone, go and give her a follow because out of all the guests that I've had on, at her age to look as good as she does, I mean, she is probably the most inspiring guest that I've had on just because, I mean, it's, it's so, can you give us a front double buy so we can just say, everyone, look at, just look at her for God's Look at that. That's just absolutely insane. Give us a most <laughs> muscular, too. I mean, she's just absolutely Look, give us a most muscular so we can see that too. Look at that. Look at, that's just not even fair. I mean, how is that even, how is that even possible? It just makes me. You see my other iron sisters. Oh yeah. Yeah. They are impressive too. Yeah. But, (laughs) but first of all, I mean, just at her age, everyone and just having her on, I mean, it's just so inspiring. Just, you know, seeing the, the hard work and the dedication and, you know, everyone, like I said, go and give her a follow. I, I highly recommend, you know, going and following her because it's just so inspirational. And honestly, Maria, I would say keep doing this bodybuilding until you basically you drop dead because that's just, I mean, it, you said this might be your last year and I'm just like, no, I can't imagine what you might achieve. Well, and- it's funny because I said that the last year was going to be my last year. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said last year. And then, um, uh, you know, I was training and training and then I was like, oh, I still have a little bit left. <laughs> my, my husband said, yeah, you, you can still do it. And then uh, a friend of ours <clears throat> said, uh, Who's a who's an IMBB judge? You know, he said you 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 can still do it. He said it won't be your last year because he said I know it won't be your last year. <laughs> and uh, and so it's like okay, I'm still enjoying it. And and the thing is, if you still enjoy it, keep doing it. You know, just do it. Um, do it for yourself. Yeah, it's. I mean, it is just absolutely insane. And again, she has such a great attitude. And the last question that I want to ask you before we get your tour of your gym and then we wrap things up is, you know, for everyone out there that's struggling during this quarantine of, you know, trying to find ways to get in shape, what advice do you have just for the average person? Because let's be honest, me and you are lucky in the fact that we have our home gyms where, I mean, 99% of the general public doesn't have that. What advice do you have for people just trying to look to, you know, just 
maybe even not even maybe even just start in their journey, but just get in, get in some exercise just so that when the quarantine does lift, you know, they, they can, you know, just go and just start working out then again. Yeah. Just, well, number one, watch your diet, you know, just watch your diet, uh, drink a lot of water, you know, um, go get a jump rope, you know, do some jump rope, take walks outside with your family, you know, walk the dog. Um, there's some stuff that you can do with, uh, uh, what do you call those bands? You, you can do bands, you can do push-ups, sit-ups, you know. Um, so there's some stuff that you can do at home even if you don't have a, a gym, you know. There's there's always something to do. Oh, yeah, there's like water jugs that you can fill up. There's milk jugs that you can fill up. I mean, there's tons of things that, that you can use. I mean, you don't need to have weights just to be able to get a workout in. No, you don't. Um, like, it, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for my jump rope. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, just do something fun, you know, hula hoop. Um, you know, when you're when you're talking on the phone, watching TV, do squats. You can do just body squats. Um, so there's some stuff that you can do planks. But but most importantly, just watch your diet and um, just enjoy your time with your family. You know, um, but don't. And like I said, this all this stuff, it, it'll be over soon. You know, uh, it's not going to be a nor back to normal fingers crossed <laughs> yeah we'll never have we'll never be back to normal but just um you know just be thankful that you know you're still alive you know oh a- absolutely and that's what i say for anyone because i i have you know i'm at that age group where all my friends right now they're getting really tired of staying at home they want to just go out and socialize with other people i'm just saying like hey there's been 60,000 plus people that have died in this country alone of it. And there's going to be a lot more before this thing ends with, and just count your blessings that you, you don't know any family members that might've died or you don't know anyone personally, because yeah, it's, it's not a fun time for so many people that I've heard about on online that are just suffering from a lot of this. And it's, you know, it's, I'd, I'd much rather be locked in at home than having to go to a funeral. So. Yeah. Just count your blessings, you know? So, so just, just like I said, just enjoy time, time with your family right now, because um, when you get back to your, our new normal, you know, you're going to be back to work again, and then you won't, you won't see as much of them as, you know, as you would now. So just enjoy your time and uh, count your blessings, you know, and this too shall pass. Yep. 100 percent and now like i promised everyone maria we got to get a tour a little, quick little tour of the gym because you have my, a very nice setup gym. in there yeah <laughs> okay so um let me see i guess do i turn my phone around oh no you can keep it like this and then just show it and then i'll and, and i'll do some video magic for anyone out there listening to the podcast i'll do some editing magic to or you can okay, actually turn it sideways then too yeah that could work too uh, there we go yeah okay so this is one of the new equipment that we bought it's like a, it's like a total trainer uh, you can do so much with this with this piece here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, Brian. Oh yeah, I can see it perfectly. Yeah. There's um, I guess if I go like this, it's um, pack squat. Yeah. Yeah. And there's you got, I gotta show you my outside view. This is what I look. It's like a tree house. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, we have two decks in this house. I mean, it's got to be like Tick and Mosquito City, but it's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, we just don't. I don't go outside that much. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, this is our gym here. Uh-huh. So we're gonna add, add um more pieces. I'm looking for. I need a pet deck. Well, I don't yep. need a pet deck, but I want a pet deck. Yep. So we do have some some barbells here. You know, one That's of those nice. things we can adjust. But um, yeah. So this this room used to be like empty. Yeah. Yeah, so now the only room I have to fill is that one room that's in there. <laughs> have you trained already today, or are you about to train? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to train today. What are you training? Uh, today's supposed to be my leg day. Oh. So today's quads. And they, Oh, i got to show you my little, um, for my picture thing. <laughs> uh, can you see it? See here, my little kind of like camera setup yeah. that my son has for me. Jeez, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you got the lighting and everything. Yeah, it's that's perfect. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. So that's that's our little setup in this in this house here. Yeah. So yeah. that is anyway. I and mean, there's all my little trophies. Oh well, <laughs> yeah, and we saw the other trophies on the oh, the other ones. Your husband's. Yeah. Um, I was. Yeah. Geez, I was yeah. like, geez, got enough trophies over there. Good God. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, he's the one that got me into bodybuilding. Yep. Uh, I remember I told you that. Mm-hmm. And um, so. Yeah, we um 
we've got a quite a few collection here. <laughs> that that is amazing. And again, you guys, like I said, go and give Maria a follow. I highly recommend it. And Maria, just keep doing what you're doing. And I can't wait to have you on again next year. Where hopefully this virus will be out of everyone's mind, and you know we'll be able to just sit and talk about how you're, you know, even better than you were this time. Even though I'll find that hard to believe. Yeah, I just like I said, I'm just going to continue my journey, and, and if we don't have any shows, and I, I'm, I know we probably will. I'm hoping, I'm, you know, I'll just continue my journey. Um, so it's always been fun talking to you. Uh, oh, Ryan. it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, and honestly, just the inspiration that you give, even even me, not even just the viewers in and of themselves. I mean, is tremendous. I got to go and get a workout done after today too, and I'm probably going to get trained into overdrive. Me. I'll take you through a workout right here in my little gym. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to handle it, everyone. I'd probably pass out after like 15, 20 minutes. Just the, just from her results alone, I will just say, you know, hey, I'm going to pass. I am just naturally more of a leaner person being 6'3 and just, you know, just long and lengthy where, yeah, it's going to take me a while to catch up. But again, you guys, I, we can't appreciate her having her on enough. And again, everyone go and give her a follow. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Ryan.